Master Chef Meat Boy is back, and by no means do I consider myself a Master Chef or a Meat Boy. Maybe that's just me being humble, but believe it or not, cheesecake can be made healthy with quality ingredients. This reduces the inflammatory aspects of the food, but most importantly, it increases the nutrient content substantially. We need to make two components today. One, the graham crackers for the graham cracker crust, and two, the filling for the cheesecake. This recipe can be done, you know, without the graham cracker crust, without flour, without honey. You can substitute artificial sweeteners. You can even make this raw primal by just making the cheesecake mix and not cooking it. So regardless of what diet you are on, there is a version of this cheesecake that can be made unless you're not consuming dairy. First, we are making the graham crackers and we're mixing the dry ingredients. Two cups of einkorn flour, Einkorn flour is the original type of wheat flour. It's never been hybridized. It has 14 chromosomes instead of the modern wheat that has 42 chromosomes. This is sprouted so the anti-nutrients are lower. And in general, you know, the mineral content, the vitamin content is higher. That being said, this is still wheat. It still contains gluten. It can be inflammatory if, you know, you're not genetically predisposed to handling this type of food. Definitely a better option than any other type of wheat that most people have available. Half a teaspoon of salt. We're adding two teaspoons of vanilla powder. You can use vanilla extract, but this is the purest, least inflammatory form of vanilla that I know of without being prohibitively expensive. And then we're adding a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is Ceylon cinnamon. It has less of the inflammatory compounds that cassia cinnamon has. So make sure to get Ceylon cinnamon. A normal recipe would call for sugar in the dry mix, but we're using more honey in the wet. And you would also add baking powder here, which we are not adding because, you know, it's a chemical ingredient and the stuff we're using here is such high quality. I would rather omit it. For the wet ingredients, I have half a cup of honey. I'm using raw honey from a local farm here. You know, since this cheesecake is getting cooked, it's not that important that the honey or any of these ingredients are raw, but generally speaking, raw local ingredients will be higher in nutrients, which will still preserve more nutrients during the cooking process. One quarter cup of raw butter. Here I have three teaspoons of raw milk. And then I have one egg. This is actually a duck egg, higher cholesterol content, higher nutrient content, not really needed. It's what I had on hand. As you guys can see, we have that nice dark orange yolk. I'm just gonna mix to combine the wet ingredients. As this mixes, I'm slowly going to incorporate the dry mixture. So the dough is a little bit wet. I'm going to add a little bit more flour to tighten it up. So we had two cups of flour. I think it needs about two and a quarter. When you use high quality ingredients, this stuff tastes so good, you could just eat it by the spoonful. You don't even have to cook it or make a cheesecake. Just eat graham cracker dough. This is still a little bit wet for graham cracker. That's why I put so much flour on the counter. And all the ingredients were room temperature. So if you use everything when it's cold, it's gonna be a bit firmer. With how good this dough tastes raw, I find it hard to believe the effort I'm putting into this cheesecake is gonna be worth it, but we'll see. This doesn't have to be kneaded. We just want it to be a little drier and still form together. And this is, yeah, this is definitely gonna, this is definitely, the butter is definitely gonna melt in my hand. So I wanna try not to hold on to it too much. Now we need to cool this down so that we can spread it out thinly. If we try to spread it out while it's warm, it's just gonna melt and stick all over the place. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, I actually lied. I put it in the freezer and now we are going to make the filling. The filling for the cheesecake is where the nutrient density is really packed in. Here we have some cream cheese and some sour cream from a local farm. As you can see, that slight yellow color, you know, this is like nutty, butterscotchy, grassy, super amazing. If you don't have access to high quality local raw grass fed dairy, it really compromises the nutrient density of this recipe. You know, you can still make it a lot healthier by using better quality ingredients, but this is at the top of the list for vitamin content for being less inflammatory. So we have 32 ounces 
aka four cups of cream cheese. Not to mention expensive. <laughs> the ingredients for this cheesecake probably cost between, you know, 30 and $40. And you could buy a regular cheesecake in the store for probably half of that price. What's also expensive is drinking 10 vodka sodas every Friday night and paying for medications because you're not healthy. So we got the four cups of cream cheese. We want eight ounces of sour cream. Some recipes use heavy cream instead of sour cream. Some recipes have different ratios as well, but this is the most consistent. Four parts cream cheese to one part sour cream. Now we have one cup of raw honey. Most recipes use sugar, so this might make this a bit wet. Although I made sure to use a more crystallized raw honey for this part, as you can see. I can barely get it out of the jar. This is like stickier than my hair pomade. I'll put this in my hair. Now we have six eggs. These are the duck eggs that I was using earlier. Oh, we were supposed to actually cream those in, but too late. About a quarter teaspoon of salt. And here we want four teaspoons of vanilla powder, AKA about $10 worth of vanilla powder. Almost forgot, we have to add a couple tablespoons of flour. Again, if you're raw primal, if you're not using flour, if you're not making the graham cracker crust, you can omit the flour from the filling. But since we're using it, we might as well use it in this too. So about three tablespoons of flour will help keep this together. And that's really it for the filling. Most recipes do use lemon juice and lemon zest. I really hate putting lemon juice and lemon zest in cheesecake, so I'm not gonna do it. So now we just wanna mix this to incorporate. This is a bit wet. That's because the local dairy is not as dry as the store-bought stuff. So we could have probably used egg yolks instead of whole eggs. That's what I think I would have done. Oh, we're just gonna roll with this and see how it turns out. Take a little taste of this. Oh yeah, that's good. It's almost like ice cream. This could definitely be a little sweeter. You know, I cut down on the amount of sugar in this recipe. And if you think about it, you know, the total amount of sugar in the whole cheesecake, one cup of honey, it's about half of what you would normally see in a dessert. So yeah, it's still a cup of honey, but it, it's almost more savory than sweet because you have all the complex flavors of the high quality ingredients and the reduced sugar content. Doesn't taste as good as the graham cracker dough, but it's pretty good. Our graham cracker dough is nice and cooled off. I'm gonna split this in half and we are going to spread it as thinly as possible on two separate sheets. Don't wanna add too much flour to this because it'll start cracking. And you don't have to be really nice with this recipe because you know we're not making legitimate graham crackers. If you wanted this to be like really nicely shaped and squared, that's fine. But we're just gonna blitz this into powder to make into a crust for the cheesecake. So we don't have to make it pretty. And uh, if you guys haven't used parchment paper, this stuff is a lifesaver. The thinner this is, the crispier it's gonna get. That's why I said Master Chef, guys, not Pastry Chef, Master Chef. I don't do pastry. I'm gonna pop this in the oven, 300 degrees. Probably gonna take about 40 minutes to dry it out completely. The graham cracker dough was way too wet. It wouldn't dry out in the oven. I tried upping the heat and it's still, you know, kind of soft and doughy. It's not really crispy. Uh, so we're gonna let this cool off, throw it in the food processor, see what happens. For the graham cracker crust, the ratio is four parts graham cracker to two parts butter to one part honey. So I'm going to weigh the amount of graham cracker before I put it in the food processor. So this one is 316, this one is 257. So I'll just even that out by adding some. So we got about 300 grams of graham cracker. So this turned out really good. And the graham cracker is all ground up, really fine powder. Now I'm just gonna weigh out the 150 grams of butter. And we want the 75 grams of honey. So butter and honey into the graham cracker mix. This is almost like making a pie dough. It's just gonna come together into this ball and that's when you'll know it's done. You can see it's like one giant mass just floating around. Keep in mind guys, we're substituting honey for white sugar in a lot of these recipes. So it's gonna be more moist and not turn out as dry as it should be. Not too big of a deal from a taste perspective and the finished product. And this is nothing crazy guys. The difference between an average person doing this and an expert is just how pretty it's gonna look in the end. You know, it's gonna taste the same. The crust is a little uneven in parts, don't worry about it. Somewhat important, so it cooks evenly, but as long as it's not too crazy. The only thing I would worry about 
is make sure there's not too much crust in these corners here. That's where it tends to accumulate. And just make sure there's no thin parts near the top because those will just end up burning. Well, that doesn't look too appetizing. Let me make the other crust and then we'll fill it up. I forgot to mention on the first one, just make sure to butter the baking dish just in case this sticks. I mean, there is a ridiculous amount of butter in this crust, so I don't think it will. Both pie crusts are finished. We have to pre-bake these at 350 degrees for eight minutes. With this recipe, I don't think I should have baked the crust. I think all that was gonna happen is like the butter's gonna melt a little bit. So, it doesn't have to be done. When you bake a cheesecake, it's supposed to be in a water bath. Unfortunately, I can't fit both of these in here. So I'm gonna do a little experiment. We're gonna do one in the water bath, one separately. I'll do the one that had the slightly burnt graham cracker outside of the water bath. Now I'm just gonna evenly ladle the filling into each of these. Fingers crossed, I think we have enough. Oh man, Frankie boy is on it today. One hell of a job for winging a recipe. You do wanna be careful, the vanilla beans do settle to the bottom. For the water bath, I'm gonna take a pot of boiling water and just pour it into the bottom. The main thing this does is it keeps the oven really, really moist and steams the top. Not the prettiest, but we got it done. All right, so both ovens are on 350. This is gonna take about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes to set. One thing I do when I bake bread to steam up the oven is I throw ice cubes in the bottom. I'm gonna do that here too. So as the oven heats up, the ice cubes should steam up and you can always throw in more ice cubes. This is not that effective in a cooler oven, 350 degrees. Usually baking bread is done at like 550, 600 degrees where the ice cubes really steam up. So the cheesecakes were in the oven for an hour and a half. Halfway through the one on top that wasn't in the water bath, I had to cover it with aluminum foil because it was browning a lot. Uh, right now it's nice and caramelized. It's still bubbling a lot in the oven. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm just letting the heat out of the oven and I'm gonna let these cool overnight in the oven. I mean, yeah, you can see this one did get a little too dark on top, but if we take this out now, the cake is probably going to sink. Uh, it still might sink, but we're gonna leave that. One on the bottom, as you can see, bunch of steam coming out. Looks much better overall, less browned on top, nice golden color, and it rose a bit more too. So, I'll see you guys in the morning. The water bath cheesecake turned out a lot better. It's more moist, less burnt on top. Definitely the way to go. You don't have a water bath, maybe do it on a lower heat. Maybe try to get some more steam in the oven, do some more ice cubes. Let's cut each of these and give it a try. Neither of them stuck to the pan, but the graham cracker was really crumbling apart on the bottom. Next time I would maybe pre-cook the pie crust a bit more or try something else. Uh, the Water bath one is definitely lighter in color and you know fuller as we saw on the outside. You know, this one's kind of compact and almost dried out. That is crazy. That is so good. This is definitely a little bit overcooked. You know, the graham cracker on the bottom is really crispy but the flavor of the cheesecake is really good. It's really clean, very rich, very heavy. Now for the moist one. Yeah, that one's a lot better. That one's so much better. And the graham cracker isn't as overcooked. It's more flavorful because there's a higher moisture content. Let me get my professional taste tester. Jean, you wanna say hello to everyone? Hi everybody, I'm gonna try French What, is, what do you usually call them? Hello YouTube viewers. Camera people. Camera people. I'm gonna try Frank's delicious cheesecake. Mmm. Very creamy. I guess she's having cheesecake for breakfast. Probably. How good is it, Gina? Mmm. Very creamy and delicious. How does it compare to other cheesecakes you've had? It's a little different, right? Mm-hmm. 
since the moisture content of the filling was so high, it's really, really soft. It's almost more like a banana pudding texture as opposed to like a cheesecake. It's not really that firm. So definitely opt for egg yolks instead of whole eggs if you want to tighten up that batter a little bit. Mmm. That's really good. <laughs> Oops. Can you believe this is healthy because of the, how good the ingredients are? Or is it actually healthy? Well, not if you eat three slices of it. Oh, it's so good. I might actually eat the whole pie. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, mm -hmm. subscribe, definitely share the video if you enjoyed it. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's oh. Free Range Meat. And just so you know, ladies, he's single. High quality, nutrient-dense animal foods at an affordable price. You guys could also check out frankiesnaturals.com for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Let me know what recipes you guys would like to see in the future. Mm. Thank you.